Dr. Sherry, I'm coming at you for Angel's Whisper because apparently we have to have a talk. Um, I was told by Spirit today that um, I was to take a rest, stop pushing so hard and get out on the water. And I always know that there's a reason stuff's going to come, you know? Now, the whole reason for this, this little, this um, impromptu video right now is the word Spirit. Um, it's come to my attention, and I guess I should have picked up on it a while ago, that um, people think I'm a witch. And I can't think of anything more incorrect. Um, they think that I don't believe in God. They think that I'm dealing with like dark spirits because I say spirits said. Um, and I thought that, you know, my website and my face page name, The Angel's Whisper, would be a pretty big clue. But I shouldn't assume anything, you know. Um, I, I don't deal with demons. I work with only the light. I talk to our Father, God, our Creator, all day long, every single day. I pray to Him. I don't actually even pray to Him. Praying to me is when I'm asking for something. I just talk to Him because He's my dad. And I have an incredible relationship with Him. I'm very, very close to Him. I was raised in a very, very religious family. I was a Jehovah's Witness my entire life. And I was devout and I was very loyal and I thought that I was doing the right thing. I believed that this was what God wanted me to do. And uh, there was a lot of things that didn't feel right about it, but I, I did what I was raised to do because that's what I believed. I believed my family. My, all my family left except for my brother and then uh, my son. I raised my kids as Jehovah's Witnesses too. My daughter never took to it. Uh, my son is still a part of it and he is one of the people who believe that I'm working with demons because as Jehovah's Witnesses that's how we're raised to believe. We're raised to believe that only a certain number of people are allowed to speak to angels um, and anyone else that's talking to someone must be talking to a demon and to me that is such a crippling w w way that religion has to, to instill fear into people. You know, I'm not dealing with demons, I'm talking to angels. I'm talking to the, our Father and I'm asking Him for the help of His Archangels. You know, everybody has a duty, everybody has a job. We all come from Spirit before we get here. Where do you think you were before you, you were created? You know, you were part of Spirit. And when we come down here, we're wearing these physical suits as humans, but we are all still connected to Spirit. We still have that energetic connection. And we have the power that, that has been given to us by our Father to manifest and create things into our lives. Why do you think so many people are successful and, some, and, and others aren't? They don't have the they don't have the courage of their convictions and they're not trusting in themselves. Um, and it doesn't mean rich. It means successful. It means it, taking charge of your own life. You don't have to have a lot of money to be successful. So don't mistake in what I just said for that. Um, look at me shaking my finger. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like a religious teacher? Ooh, I don't like that. Let's take that out. Delete, delete. Please don't say that. Um, okay, so. I deal with our father. I talk to our father. He's the one I go to directly, like my dad, because that's what he is. He is, and, and his angels in heaven, uh, their job is to help while I'm down here. And that's why I ask for the angel's assistance. And when I speak about spirit, um, I'm speaking about angelic spirit, the spirit of our father, of our ultimate creator. And we are all part of that oneness. Um, it kept coming to me in different ways, and, and as I said, it broke, it broke up my family. My son doesn't have anything to do with me because of, um, he's afraid, and he literally is. He's afraid. He thought, you know, as he was taught, that if it wasn't an angel, I mean, if it wasn't a certain number of people, like the, the leaders in the, in, the, in the group or the congregation uh, that were speaking, then if it was you talking, you must be hearing voices, or you must be talking to demons, and that's so far from the truth. I'm so connected. When I was with... Um, the organization, uh, I didn't have a personal connection and I always felt so guilty about that. I'd fall asleep while I was saying my prayers. It was horrible. My mind would wander. I tried so hard and I lived this life very, very devout. I was very moral. Um, I, I appreciate being raised that way and I know it happened for a reason because it taught me morals. It taught me a basic uh, fundamental of the Bible. I know a lot about the Bible. Believe me, I've read it my entire life back and forward. Um, I, I also learned about other religions. Um, so. It was good for that. It helps me when other people are coming out of religion, the clutches of religion. They're trying to, to make you feel like you're doing something wrong, that you're evil, that you're dealing with demons. When we're not, we are all God's children. And we are all working with the good of the light. And, th and that's what I work with, the light, the light energy. When I talk about full moon uh, releases and, and I talk, it, it, it's symbolic. When I talk about Ganesh, the obstacle remover, or Lakshmi, the goddess of compassion, or whenever I speak about any god or goddess like that, it's a symbol to me. There is one creator, one ultimate creator, my father, who created all of this. 
And that's what I believe. That is my truth. Others can believe whatever they want. I don't push my religion. I don't have religion. See, that's, what, that's like so many years of it ingrained in me. I don't push my beliefs on another. If you don't believe in it, that's fine. If you have a different religion, that's fine. My son-in-law's family is Jewish. And uh, my daughter believes in nothing. She's agnostic. Um, well, she goes back and forth. But she's definitely not Jewish, and she's definitely not a Jehovah's Witness. Um, and he is, is not a practicing um, member either, but his family is. And so he goes it on holidays, and he's very respectful, and he grew up that way. And so there's certain things that he, he still does, you know, like lighting the menorah. And he wears the little, um, is it lighting the menorah or wearing the menorah? And lighting the, the I'm sorry, see, I, and, I, and I know that that's not right, and that's going to offend somebody, and I don't mean to be offensive. Um, it's the candles that they light at Christmas time at Hanukkah for them. Um, and he does that, and my grandson does that, and my daughter goes along to some of the family um, celebrations um, to, to be supportive, and that's awesome. I, I, I actually encouraged her to do that because she had a hard time, you know, thinking about doing that after coming out of the Jehovah's Witness religion. She didn't want to. Um, she said, I don't ever want anything to do with religion ever again. And I said, you don't have to. You know, he's not got anything to do with it either, but he was raised that way, and, and there's certain things that are tradition, and, and it, if it helps him and it makes his family um, feel comfortable, you want to do that and support him. So she does, and my grandson does, and you know, no one has any issues with that. She has her Christmas, he has his Hanukkah, and uh, it, and everyone goes as they as they go along. I, I posted this morning a, a little picture of a, um, it was a video actually of a man, and he had a dog, and he had on top of the dog sat a cat, and on top of the cat sat a mouse. And I said, here, proof that we can be different, unique, and all still get along. We all came from one father. There's so many different religions and different ways of, of, of feeling, you know, this is how we have to get to where we're going. You know, this is my personal path. If your personal path says that, that you're a Jewish person, then I respect that. If your personal path says that you're a Jehovah's Witness, I respect that. I do. It's your choice. It's not my job to change your religion, change your beliefs. I'm just supposed to lead people to the light, and the light is the Father. So um, the way it came to me is they said Katy Perry, I just heard it on the radio, Katy Perry, <laughs> and they always show me it's Katy Perry because of the songs she writes. You know, she has beautiful songs. Her songs are to spirit. They are to the Father. They're not to demons. They're not to dark energy. She is so far from that. She's a metaphysical, but she's like a hippie chick. She, she's in, in love with creation, just like I am. And uh, what they said was um, that she's been trying to buy this um, old convent in L.A., and the nuns there are all in an uproar. And so they've gone straight to the Pope. They're getting their lawyers, and they're going to go to the Pope because they have accused her of being a witch. She's a witch. And I thought, oh, wow. You know, I mean, to me, I, I laugh, but, but at the same time, it's actually really sad because... Um, it breaks families apart. You know, I, I miss my kids. My son's right here right now with my grandson <clears throat> at Disneyland. And uh, I don't see him. And I haven't seen them at all. I've never met my little tiny grandson, although I dream with him and I talk to him. And that's pretty cool that way. Um, and you may think that that's strange, but that's a gift. It's not some demonic thing that I do. I don't tap into somebody's brain. Um, it's a gift that I was given. And I'm so grateful for, for having that. Um, but we all have the ability, we all feel connection. I mean, years ago, before I was ever doing this, and before I'd, I'd ever discovered really what my true path was, <clears throat> I was something was going on in my life, and it was pretty horrible. I was living in Canada, and uh, I was crying. I didn't know what to do, and right then my grandma called, and she said, Are you, what's going on? Are you okay? She knew. She knew. She's connected. We're connected to the ones that we love and, and that we care about. So it's no surprise that I, I dream about the people that I care about and that I love. That's not a creepy thing, you know, that, that I dream with my twin soul. I don't go into his brain and pry around and see what's going on in his family and his personal life. That doesn't happen. I'm allowed by our mutual agreement that I'm able to see certain things. And, and, and it's, it's just a connection. It's just a beautiful connection. And uh, so... I thought about that, you know, as they were talking on the radio, and then they were laughing, and, and yet at the same time, I thought, you know, some people are really afraid. They obviously clearly are afraid. The nuns were have this beaten into their head, you know, uh, their whole entire lives. I mean, do you want to go on about the, the child molestation that gets covered up, you know, and, and the priests doing all this stuff? Let's not go there. But they they firmly believe in what they did, as, as and what they believe that they were taught is the truth, just like me, you know. Um, Stuff happened where I was that you don't even want to know about, and it was all part of a very religious organization. So religion is not what it's cracked up to be. But if it's yours, peace to you. Just respect me and the fact that I am also speaking to my father, who is your father as well. I don't deal with Satan and the devil and demons. I don't even believe in that. I believe that there's good energy, and I believe that there's energy that's confused, which makes it appear dark. Um, there's ones that are awake and tapped in and connected to 
the, the, the love movement and, and, and the vibrational connection. There's others that are sleeping and they're not aware. <clears throat> some may think I'm sleeping and unaware or I'm on bad, some bad trip, but I'm not a drug addict, I'm not a drinker, and I don't do stuff like that, you know. Uh, it doesn't even matter if, if, if I did. I am not judging you, don't judge me, Jesus said. Judge your brother, not lest you be judged, right? Leave it all to him, he's the one. So, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> they're, they're talking, walk your walk, talk your talk. So, basically, I'm thinking about Katy Perry and how they're going straight to the Pope, you know, and they've got the judge, uh, the lawyers involved, and they're trying to prove that she's a, she's a, a witch so that she can't have this property, this beautiful monastery. It's an old monastery, and there's nothing, there's nothing going on. It's not there, but I suppose they feel, oh, we don't want them to use, her to use her, uh, something that they considered holy um, to, to, to propagate or, or move forward her, whatever her lifestyle is. But the thing is, it, it's just, a, I mean, I get that. I suppose, you know, it's a vessel to them, and to them it's something sacred, and they're afraid of her. But the whole point is they're afraid. And your fear is going to block you from everything. It's going to block you from moving forward. It's going to block you from allowing love into your life and people into your life. It's going to keep us at a distance. It's going to keep people like you and me at a distance. And I don't want to be at a distance. I welcome anybody that has positive energy. I'm very loving and very open. It's just the negative energy that I stay away from. I stay away from negative energy. I do everything I can to stay away from negative energy. Believe me, I'm not working with demons. And neither are the ones that I'm connected to. We all are part of one universal consciousness and we all are connected to the Father. The people that are in my in my circle anyway, you know, some people have different views on, on what spirituality is. But when I speak about spirit, I am speaking about the heavenly angelic forces along with our Father. God. Okay? I don't call him any name, I just call him Dad. Um, really, I was raised to call him Jehovah and uh, and then and, 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 and they didn't like that. They said that, you know, we have a name, and I agreed with that. You know, you've got a name. I, 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 I even said about the archangels, the angels that were working with me, I didn't want to work with them because I didn't know. Here's an example. I didn't know who was working with me, and I didn't want that energy there. I felt if there were voices coming or if there were messages coming um, in my dreams, you know, if I was hearing, I wasn't going to listen to it if I didn't know who it was. And so they started to let me know who they were. They're angels. So once the angels named themselves, I was good with it. But they had to have a name for me. I wasn't going to listen to something that was coming from a voice that I didn't understand and I didn't know who it was. And then ones who speak in star language or speak in their, you know, a spiritual language. I'm not going to name any religious group, but there are people that speak. And uh, I ask them, what does it mean to you? Oh, I don't know. Well, I'm sorry. If I don't know what's coming out of my mouth, I'm not speaking it. And if you don't know what's coming out of your mouth, and you don't know what you're speaking, I don't want anything to do with it. Because clearly it's not coming from the light. Because you don't utter something that you don't stand behind. I don't. So there's a message for that. Um, oh, I started to say something else and that came in. That was a good one though, wasn't it? Because that's really important. Um, <clears throat> Look how pretty it is. It to come out because it was so still. Oh, okay. So I got the nudge. And when I say spirit told me, I either hear something in a dream or I get a message that pops up or I hear a song on the radio when I'm talking to my father. And the oracle cards that I use, they're just tools. They have like sayings on them or they've got pictures on them. I can look at the pictures and I can see what, what's there and, it, and, it's, and it's counsel. It's, when I look at it, it's a message to me. I'm taught by our Father how to read certain things. That's my gift. You may not agree with it, but that's my gift. It's just a tool that I use. Um, so I'll look at the card and I'll read a picture. Just like I, I, I'm out here. I'm a shaman, right? I work with the animal messengers and I know that the crow is coming from the other side. It's between worlds. It's between spirit and, and, and land. And are you listening? Are you, are you speaking appropriately? One of the things that crow says is walk your walk, talk your talk. So this is what I'm doing. I got the messages. I looked and I saw uh, I was talking to the father. You know, what should I do? I asked out in my head out loud. I said, what should I do? Should I get to work? I'm looking at the lake and it's really, really still right now and it doesn't feel as hot. And so I got my oracle cards and I spread them around on the, across the table. And it's always happened this way for me. I don't know why. It just, it just started that way and, and it works for me. Um, so I look, pick, turn one over and it says, rest, you've been working too hard. And I have. Um, I don't find that creepy. I find that's guidance. I asked for guidance. So when they said rest and I looked out at the lake and the lake was still and it's hard to row when it's choppy. And when it's too hot, I don't want to get burned. I've got very fair skin. You know, I, I don't mind some color, but I don't want to get, you know, age myself. Um, I thought, okay, that's what it means. It means go. And the thing is, I'm trusting my higher self, me, my connection to our Father, and, and the gifts that we've all been given. 
in my own head. I made the decision. Okay, well, to me, when I look at that, it means take a ba- take a break, go outside. You do it. You work all the time, you know. And I always know that when I when I follow what my higher self says, which is my connection, my own personal connection to to our Father, and I listen to what I get. And when I listen to what I get, my guidance is more and more clear because my Father realizes that I'm paying attention to what I get from my higher self and so he's making sure that he's giving me cues and clues. I know she'll read it that way. I'll know when she looks at that, that's what that's what it'll mean to her. When she sees the crow, that's what she knows it means. When she sees the hummingbird, and I wish I could turn my camera around because I just saw a hummingbird. Hummingbird means lighten up, so I have to not be so heavy here. It also means grab the sweetness in life. It also means that you will accomplish what you may think is impossible. Um, and that others may think is impossible because you look at the hummingbird. It's so light right lighten up happy You look at it. It makes you happy um, It darts really quickly it goes after what it what it needs and it and it grabs the sweetness in life So it's saying grab the sweetness take a grab of this and, and quickly while you've got it That basically was what the message was saying to me when I saw that go rest card and I looked at the lake I thought go grab it. You know if the hummingbird had come to my window right then I would have known that too um, also, the body of the, of the hummingbird is aerodynamically incorrectly built. It's um, got a bigger body and these tiny little wings, and it shouldn't be able to fly. But not only does it fly, it flies up, down, sideways, all over the place, and it's an amazing creature. It can fly hundreds of miles. It moves and talks like me. I am hummingbird totem. That's one of my totems. You can probably look it up and figure that out. Um, I go like 100 miles an hour when I'm full of energy. Um, so the fact the crows stopped talking, so that's what I was supposed to notice, it was probably saying, pay attention, look over there. I know that because I'm a shaman, I'm connected to the animals, I study them, I, I understand what their, what their language means. Now to another shaman, my friend Joseph White Wolf, he's also a shaman, but when he looks at the animals, they, they have a different uh, message. Not all the time, but a lot of the times I've listened to him and his is different than mine. Um, and also you have to pay attention to what the, the animals are doing. Well, the, the, the crow was talking, 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 talking. There was only one, so that's me, talking, talking, talking. So it was giving me cues. The little hummingbird came flying over. It was in the air and it was flying. So it's time to get moving. So I got to wrap this up. I also got to keep it lighter, right? Um, and, and recognize that I'm going to be accomplishing what I need to accomplish by, by posting this video because it's important to ones who don't understand and who are concerned. It's to set their fear at rest. So my father, your father, knows that when I see the hummingbird, that's what's going to happen in my head. It's not that I'm connected to some demonic force. My father who created me, who knows me better than that, he knows how my mind works and what I'm going to look at that and I'm going to think. Well, Joseph's going to look at it and think something differently. So he'll be given the messages that our father knows that, that he looks at and he pays attention to. Our messages come to us in a lot of different ways. And um, we all read them differently, you know, and who knows better than our dad? how we're going to respond, just like you and your own kids. You know that if this happens, your kid's going to do this because you know your kid, right? Well, who knows me better than my dad? So that's why I use the Oracle cards. That's how I do my readings. Uh, and I know that while I'm out here on the lake, because that's how I earn my living is by life coaching people and helping and encourage people to move forwards towards the light. That is my biggest gift. That's my gift and my job to help people reach up to spirit and remember who we are and what our connection is and that we are able to connect with one another and move forward this way. So this is my job. So while I'm on the lake thinking, okay, I should be working because I need to pay for my bills. I know that I'm going to get some private readings or I'll get a call for one of my life coach people. Um, I posted something before I left. I thought, okay, I can have a part in this too. I posted on my page, you know, what my services were in here. This is what I'm doing. And I trust that my father will take care of me. So he knows what I'm going to do. That's how if when we pray to our father and we have a a dialogue and we're in constant communication with our angels and with our father they put things in our way they line things up for us they know how we're going to speak so they know um, what to bring in front of us so that we know what's important um, you can follow the rest I'm gonna go I'm uh, I want to I want to spend a little bit of time before it gets too warm it's incredible the look the lake is still is still very very still I do listen when I'm counseling you know, I listen to my own messages. I get smacked all the time by my father. It's just like a, like a kid. I told you the other day when I was out on the lake, an older fellow came up alongside my canoe, and he told me to put some weight down in the front of my boat <laughs> to slow it down. <laughs> that was a message, right? He told me that... Um, so I went, and I got a rock, and I put it in the front of the boat. And it wasn't actually to slow me down. That was my thought. It was to steady my boat. So put a little bit of weight into the situation. Um, Bring on the heavyweights, is what I felt like it meant. So bring on the heavyweights to, to lower the front of the boat down a bit so it can go, gl you know, glide through the, 
emotional water smoothly and straight. That's what it's for. And so I call on the big weights. Who is the big weights? I call on my archangels. I call on my father. Help me out. Help me get this boat going straight and steady, right? That's how I read the messages that I get. And uh, so please be, please, please, please. I'm not crazy. I'm very, very intelligent. Um, I run my own business. I take care of myself. Um, I'm very, very lucid. I'm sorry that my children uh, disagree with my spiritual stance. But other than that, um, my son loves me very much. He told me that if I came back to the Jehovah's Witness organization, he would wrap his arms around me. But until then, I was dead to him because <laughs> that's what the Bible told him. So um, I know that he loves me and he doesn't think I'm insane. So um, message, message. What was I going to say? Uh, sorry. I have so much going on in my head right now. I'm just thinking about my own family. Don't allow it to split your family apart. You know, religious and spiritual beliefs. It's not worth it. It's terrible. I do know that it's fear, and, and I pray for my kids um, that they see that it's not okay to, to treat a family member like they're dead. Um, we all have a, a right to our beliefs, and I'm sorry that they're afraid. Um, but I hope that this, this sets uh, your mind at rest, that I'm not anyone to fear. Um, I don't pray to the devil. I don't work with the devil. Gosh, I am so, so, so into the light. You have no idea. So thank you for listening, and I hope this has helped others who are going through the similar situation, because I know a lot of us are. And uh, I hope you have a fabulous rest of the day. This is going to be bad ass for me. Sorry, I was kind of going to try to drag that back. And I thought, sorry, I'm a hippie. It's badass out here. It just straight up is. <laughs> sorry if the words offend you. Hey, you. Thank you for my messages. Thank you. Nobody could love nature and what I have been given and what we've been given by our heavenly God more than me. Nobody.